Hello everybody and welcome to the Jumping Spider live photo shoot. This is going to be something that's very exciting because I've never tried it before and well let's face it anything's going to happen okay. What I want you to do is just give me a shout out in the comments to make sure that everything is working and everything is as it should be. You hear me and the picture is coming through okay. So while we're waiting and while we're waiting to get everything sorted out let me just explain to you uh, what will happen if the stream ends suddenly we have a, uh, a computer crash which often this thing does or the internet turns off that'll be um, cc photography's fault or something else happens then bear with me we'll get back online as quickly as possible okay so Everything's good, uh, okay, so uh, let me know who's in the chat and where are you from? Are you looking forward to this live photo shoot? So let me know in the chat and I shall get on. Crossing out my notes, because I've got notes this time. I've never used notes on a live before. Okay, so let's see who we got in here. We've got Craig, Hannah, Gary, uh, real Nikon lover. Uh, Jeff, Emma, Davids, so we've got a lot of people in here, that's great, do me a favour, give it a like, give it a share, the more people that like and share it, then you know, the more that YouTube will push it and hopefully get more viewers, the more viewers we get, the more successful it is, then the more chance I'll do it again, maybe with a praying mantis next time, because we can't do it with Bob, unfortunately, because Bob has done a runner, Somehow he got out of his cage. I've no idea why he hasn't come back. I do have my UV torch though, look. Just in case he pops up. <laughs> you never know. Knowing my luck, it would be on a live stream that he would pop up. So Bob, yes, he has done a runner. So there's going to be no Bob on the uh, channel in the foreseeable future. Okay, so first thing I want to mention here now is the uh, the sponsor of this um, this live shoot is me. I put out a new tutorial which is called The Complete Shot. It's a new tutorial series that I am working on where I take you through from start to finish on creating a uh, an image. In this case this one is a jumping spider on a matchstick. I take you through from start to finish on how to create this image. Now just for the live stream only, I'm putting this tutorial out for $9.95. That's only for this, tutor, this live stream. As soon as this live stream ends, that price is going to be bumped up. So if you want to grab it at the cheapest it's ever going to be at, now is, the chance, uh, now is your chance to grab it. Go over to my website, link in the description of this video, grab yourself the complete shot, Jumping Spider on a matchstick. Now also, for any of you, because I've been moaning at me about my background cards, okay? I've, su I've succumbed, okay? I have produced some of these limited edition signed and numbered background cards. However, there's only 10 available, okay? Now these things, they take me up to in a day to complete, so they are a premium price for these uh, background cards. But I've given them a good testing. You've seen them on my channel for the last couple of years. I had one out for three or four weeks in, the, in the, um, the rain and the storms and it survived quite well. We are going to be using these on the stream tonight and again these are available, they're on the website, only 10 available, okay? Numbered, signed, limited editions, okay? So if you're one of those people who have said, you know, I'll give you any amount of money to get it, now's your chance. Now then, I've got the boring stuff out the way. <laughs> Because let's face it, that's the boring stuff. Let's talk about what we're doing tonight. So tonight, I am going to be jump. Uh, I'm jumping. I'm going to be photographing my jumpy spider. This is going to be the Fidipeus camatus. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that right, but it's my favourite jumpy spider to photograph. It's roughly the size of our native zebra jumpy spider, so it's a very small spider. We're going to be going through from the start to the finish, where I will be outputting the images to Instagram. Right. Lauren, thank you for becoming a supporter of the channel. Thank you very much. Uh, much appreciated. Um, so I've got to talk about this thing, okay? 
this is the wig that we're going to be using tonight okay um so you've seen all this part before like uh, i'm using a canon eos r with the lower 100 millimeter uh, macro lens one of my favorite macro lenses ever okay we have the Godox twin macro flash this is the mf12 twin macro flash and we have the crafty bells hood here anyone who's on my patreon account the video is coming out how i've modified it i've just went a little bit behind with doing all kinds of different stuff however you might notice there's a little bit um, of a weird thing on top of here so Canon in their ultimate wisdom because they are such brainchilds and they are the best camera company in the world God I hope they're not watching this stream when you plug in a HDMI cable because I've got a HDMI cable plugged in so that you can see what the camera sees it turns off the back screen and the EVF why I don't know it's Canon's choice so in order for me to be able to allow you to see what the camera's seeing, I have to output it to a field monitor, then go from the field monitor to the computer. So you're going to see me like, like this, okay? That's not how I normally take my pictures, okay? I'm normally using the EVF here, but that's just so you can see what's going on. Okay, so first of all, what we want to do, uh, what I want to do is as I'm doing the shoot, if you have any questions, pop them in the comments. The wife is monitoring this camera. She's monitoring the chat. What I want you to do, if you have any questions, put a capital Q and then put your question in. That way it highlights it so the missus can see it's a question, then she can ask me the question. And you can ask us questions at any time, okay? Uh, yeah, Bobby's in the house somewhere. Don't know. Believe me, uh, watch my Instagram because if I find Bob, it will be on a story on the Instagram. So if I do find him, then that'll be good. Okay, so Tracy Scott, she bought this lens after seeing one of my videos. That's fantastic. I hope you used an affiliate link. And, um, what? What? He says just what under your pillow, Christy. If I wasn't such a nice person, yeah, I'd, I'd, you know what I would get? I'd, I'd get out of Mitch from Unseen Universe, okay? I'd ask him to send me a, um, you now the skin from a uh, oh, from a scorpion that's molted, little a little one, and then I'd just, I'd throw it at the missus. Yeah, I've done that more than once with the tarantula skins, and it's quite funny. Anyway, I need to get on with this shoot now because obviously we want to get on with this. So let me switch you over to the main camera. All right. So if at any time there's any glitches, the audio goes out. Just let them know in the comments. The missus will stop me from doing what I'm doing. <laughs> Okay, so for this shoot, again, we have my Fidipeus Camatus. He is in this little sweet jar. I am upgrading these sweet jars to uh, enclosures from Unseen Universe. Next week, there's a video on my channel about um, the enclosure I got off Mitch. I am very impressed with that enclosure, so I'll be upgrading all of these enclosures behind me to ones from Mitch. It's going to it's cost, cost me a fortune. What yes? set up do you recommend for beginners still in high school with not a lot of money okay this is what i would recommend this is a canon 650d get yourself a 50 mil lens on there with extension tubes i'm doing a video hopefully before uh, before we go on holiday so in two weeks i'm doing a video on a macro rig you can buy for less than 300 pound so if you haven't got a camera, you want to get into macro, less than £300, this is the camera that started my career. Nothing wrong with it. It's a fantastic camera. So keep an eye out for that video. Subscribe to the channel and uh, I'll have all the information in that video about getting yourself a macro rig for less than £300. This camera body, you can pick it up for less than £150 on Facebook. It might be battered, yeah, but the important thing is if the sensor is okay, then it's good to go. Which one? Off screen audio is low. It's the same audio. Off screen. Audio is low. Screen. No idea what that is. Can you all hear me okay? Can you just give me a thumbs up if you can hear me okay before we get started? Nothing's been unplugged or nothing, has it? No, I've got the feedback on here quite okay. <laughs> I don't, I don't understand what you mean by off-screen audio. Oh, you mic it. No, mic's fine. It's coming through okay. Okay. You 
it's a kind of rebel toothpick for a good camera. Um, any camera, to be honest with you, is good for macro. What's important is the lens you put on the actual camera itself. Okay, so if you've got a limited budget, I'd recommend you put most of the budget into the lens because the better the lens, the better the images you're going to get. It's basically just like the lens. Okay. You can start with your mobile. Yep, I've done more. We're going to be doing some mobile stuff actually. Moment lenses, check, check them out. They're awesome. Anyway, I'm going to get started with this. Oh, your lady audio is loud. That's me. Oh, that's because she's not on the. She doesn't want to be on the stream, so. No, put, I'm backwards. Plus, she keeps farting as well. Anyway. <laughs> so, let me let me come to this for you. Can we redo that so it's um, looking down? Well, I'm going to start with setting up the scene. Okay. I'll just wait for the missus to alter the camera. Okay. Yeah. Did I just it? Yeah, she's just learning how to use a tripod. You're right. Yeah, yeah. Right, so the first thing we want is a towel, okay? And the reason we want a towel is if the jump pad jumps off, it's going to land on a nice soft surface, okay? So I'm going to unfold my towel. I'm going to place this on the desk. This is especially important if you're photographing a female jumping spider because uh, you know like like a lot of things they're slightly bigger than a male um in the insect kingdom most of the females are bigger than the male so if you've got a female jumper and it, it comes off your rig and it hits the hard desk the worst case scenario is it's just going to go splat Okay, and the abdomen's going to rip open, <laughs> its guts are going to fall out, and you're going to be mopping it up, okay? Question, trying to decide between R5 and R6. Mm -hmm. I was told that for macro, the R5 would be better choice. Do I, re do you, do I re really need 45 MP for macro? That's a tough one, because as um, to be fair, if you can afford the R5, I'd go for the R5 anyway. Because it's, it's just a better overall camera than the R6. Yeah. If you're struggling for budget, then the R6 will do you fine. Now, one of my best images that I have ever taken is with the R5 and the lower lens. So, you know, personally, if I had the choice between the R6 and R5, I'd go for the R5 every time. Right. So, next. Mm, you're full of I questions. I'm a 9CD and have been shooting with a very very few light lenses yeah which shoes any recommendations for a good budget you're shooting with lighted lenses, lenses and tubes any recommendations for a good budget dedicated mac lower every single time lower i've got the edge out of the competition because it's a two times macro lens and it focuses to infinity they have a, uh, a wide choice of uh, focal lengths as well now so lower every single time i would go with lower if you're looking for something that's a bit more rugged, a bit more rever sealed, then check out the Irix 150mm lens, because that one is another fantastic lens. Right. So let's hold the questions off for a moment, because I want to get on with the uh, the shoot. We can do loads of questions when we're doing the editing, because I'm at the computer to monitor it, okay? Um, so, yeah, we'll do it then. Anyway, so, again, towel down, because, uh, you know, the jumper comes off, got a nice soft landing, okay? So if we come here, we're going to get our plant. Okay. Um, this is a hyacinth. Okay, I didn't even know what this was till uh, CC Photography told me what it was. The uh, One of the kids brought one home. I did a shoot with it. The, uh, the resulting images were very good. So we're going to try and replicate that tonight. So literally all I'm going to do, I'm going to get my uh, coaster, it's a hard drive disc, pop that on there. And we're able to spin it round quite easily. Now, I can't use my laser Susan because of the towel. I'd rather be the jumper be safe than me being easier to turn it around. Okay, so we have that now. Okay, it's a lovely little bit of kit. They're great, they really are. Let me turn this lot on now. And I'm going to take you through the setup exactly the way I would do it if I wasn't broadcasting. Alright, so we've got the rig here. Again, this is a Canon EOS R. 
with a lower 100 millimeter two times macro lens, the Godox trigger, MF12 trim macro flash, crafty bells, ignore all this stuff because that's just so you can see what's going on. So what we're going to do here now, I'm going to set my settings. I'm going to start with 1 200th. I always start with 1 200th. And I'm going to go with F11 because I don't want to focus stack in this tutorial. Can we ISO 400? So we're going to take a look now at this Hyacinth. You can see there how beautiful the Hyacinth is. Take a shot. We can see exactly what we're getting there. And the reason I do that now is I want to set the camera up, take a shot, make sure everything's working before we get the jumper out. Okay. Now, if we look at the image, can you see up the top right hand corner and we have a black area? That is something I don't particularly like. So this is where we will get our background cards out. Okay, so what I'm going to do here now, just move the plant out of the way. We are going to take a look at our background cards and see if we've got one that matches our hyacinths. So I've got one there if you look. You can see there, that matches quite nicely. And this is the other one I'm looking for. Let's get rid of those. Hmm? Mine's lagging a bit. What's mean lagging? I'm just on the first one that you've just did. Oh, it's, it's always behind by 30 odd seconds. Okay. Yeah. Mrs. is learning. <laughs> so. <laughs> well, I'm that. Sorry, not this close. Yeah, she's, she's learning as she goes along. So we've got these two backgrounds here. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is I'm literally going to hold it behind my higher sim to see which one do I like. Which one is closer to the colour of the hyacinth is what we're looking for. And I'm thinking this one is going to be perfect. So let me place that there. Pick him up a little bit. So now I'm going to do another test shot. So we're going to go to the edge of the hyacinth. So, so if you can see there now, uh, we don't have that ugly black background there. We have a nice background there in place that uh, matches our hyacinth. Now, if we get to a situation where we find it awkward because there's too much for the jumper to run around with, I will cut the hyacinth off and put it onto a mini tripod. I'm hoping to get away with not doing that. So that, well, okay, I can keep the plant then, can't I? I can put it in the garden. One thing to be, be gutted that you're going to miss it. So I'll watch some of these ones. No way, Mitch. No way, mate. You're live tomorrow night, is it? I'll be on, uh, I'll be watching that tomorrow night if you're live. And I still ain't paying Bob. <laughs> He's gone. He's he's done a runner. He's done a runner. Question: Are the backgrounds laminated with a matte material to avoid? Yes. Uh, sunlight? Yeah, these are a matte laminate on the back of here, so it avoids the flare from or reflections from the uh, the flash. Right then. So what we're going to do now is it's time to get our jumper out. Okay, let me just move that cable out of the way so as you can see. So let's. Get Hoppy, his name is, the kids named him Hoppy. Where is he? He's up here. Let's see if he's willing to play. The other day I wanted to photograph him and he really just didn't want to play ball. Oh, he's, he's out, he's here, look. Okay. So there's Hoppy. Small, can't see. Oh no, he's that small you can't see him. You'll see him in a minute, I'll have him, uh, I'll have him on in a minute. Okay, so all I'm going to do now, can you switch it to the main camera for me? Okay, what I'm going to do here, let me just make sure you can see. 
I'm just going to move the background out of the way so you can see what's going on. Don't ignore it. It's okay. So I'm going to introduce him to the hyacinth in the middle. And then all I'm going to do is just let him wander around. And instead of trying to get him into a place I want him to do, I will just follow him around with the camera. And if he gets into a nice spot, we will just snap a picture. So let's see. This is the hardest part because for some reason, he likes to wander on my hand. Okay, he's on. And he's off. <laughs> right, he's back on again. He's back on. Let's pop this in there. We will go to the EVF. Let's see if we can get a shot of him. Question, how many yeah. jumping spiders have you got now? Um, God. Three, I think. Is it three? Yeah, I think it's three. Yeah. And then so. Right, I'm just going to switch back to the alternative camera. I'm just gonna, can you get me some scissors? I want to chop this off because as I'm turning it around, you can see how it's, it's rubbing against the um, the towel. So we want to get rid of that friction. We don't want that going on there. Okay, so Hoppy is currently just here. You can probably just about see him moving around. EVF, let's see if we can get a shot. Okay, yeah. I'm not getting a shot there, I don't think. Okay. Let's switch back to the main. Let's uh I'm gonna see if I can shoot through the uh the flower into Hoppy. Get the EVF for me. Okay. Oh. okay, slightly a further away. And as typical, he moved just as I focused. You see that then? So he's coming around here now. He's on the main stem at the moment. No, I didn't want to do that. Press the button. Then unless he leaves the lid off after tonight. Yeah, unless <laughs> unless I leave the lid off for tonight. That's CC photography. Of course it'll be CC photography. <laughs> it's always CC photography, isn't it? Okay, so where are you going, buddy? So as you can see, the important thing is here is that I'm not trying to manipulate him to where I want him to be. I'm literally just letting him wander around and just keep snapping shots. And if a shot doesn't work, it doesn't matter. We're in digital. It really doesn't matter. Still work on EVF. EVF. Yeah, at the moment he's in an area where the flash won't get to him. So we've just got to wait. Let's wait him out. <coughs> okay. So at the moment, he is in the middle of the stem. He's actually coming up. Hold on two minutes. Give the EVF. This is similar to the shot I got of him the other day. Now, if I go quiet, it's because I'm concentrating, okay? Because sometimes you have to act quickly when it comes to these spiders. I don't know, it's okay. We're coming back in a minute, we're coming in. Okay. Where are you? Got to get the angle right. I'm also holding my breath as I'm trying to take the shot. Question, do you use manual or TTL on the flashes? I'm currently using TTL. Question, is the flash at full power? It's set to TTL, so I wouldn't know to be honest with you. 
taking a nice shot of his ass there. It's no good. Okay, keep the main camera for me. Okay, so let's have a look where is he now. Where is he? Okay, he's on the main uh, the main stem still. So if we go to the front camera, I should be able to show you where he is. I don't think you can see him. There's too many uh, flowers in the way. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to see if I can get the camera in close. Oh God, yeah. <laughs> Craig, I did uh, I did a practice of this in the week, and this jumper jumped onto my camera rig. And believe me, I could not find him. And he actually went inside the uh, the lens, uh, you know, the, the rig on the lens. He actually went inside there. By the way, just moving my chair out the way, guys. I want to get a low down shot if I can. Yeah, well, no. It's like you do it in sniper school or something like that, you know. Mm. Okay. Let's see if we can get him to go on top. Okay, he's come down a bit. He's come down a little bit. Let's have a look where are you now. And how annoying is it when you see a nice shot and just as you focus, they turn around? Yeah, they're constantly doing it. Okay, he's coming round. No, he's not. He's changed his mind. There he is. Unfortunately, the light isn't going to get in there. I'm going to take a shot anyway. Please, please, put two at normal use manual, put four alive as soon as you see these two three out. Yeah. I've got way too much to concentrate on at the moment to be using a manual flash. Okay, he's coming down. I don't even know if this is male or female. Okay. Where's the main one? Right. Yes. Photo, yeah, it's because these aren't the shots we'd be using. The, um, the jumper is getting used to the plant and he's exploring. So what I'm doing is I'm popping off shots just in case something happens. We can always bump up the exposure a little bit in post. But when it comes out from the stem and onto the flower, the exposure will be bang on. Which you might be trying to do now. Let's take a look. Yeah, EVF. He's just behind a flower at the moment. He's coming right up the top at the moment. Bear with me, guys. He's right at the top here. Come on, where are you? Hannah, Mom, can I go to the toilet? <laughs> what size memory card are you using to have 7K shot? The main isn't yours. That's 256 gig card I'm using. That card I use for video mostly. Okay, we're going to pop that down there. No, no, no. Yeah, uh, we'll stop on the EVF for now. Background card's a little bit too small. I could have done with an A41. No matter, no matter. We can manage. Come on. Look at the camera. Now, when we practice this in the week, we got him first shot, you know. He 
Switch it to the main camera for me. So, another thing you want to be aware of as well when you're doing this is as he's moving around the flow, he's putting down little bungee cords. So, if you want to save yourself some hassle in Photoshop, then what I would suggest is you pull off the bungee cords as you go around. And of course, if he won't go into a position that's good for us, then what we can do is chop some flowers off and put him back on the flowers. That, that means he's got no choice but to be on one of the flowers. Get the EVF for me. Are you turning your camera settings so she can close some shutter speeds, open aperture, reducing ILS, ISO? Yep, I do vary my, uh, my settings. Focal lens are you using on the Lara Fuller 22 or less? I'm currently at 1.5 times magnification for this jumping spider. <coughs> Look at that, that would have been an awesome shot if that petal wasn't in the way. Accept jumping slides to save here to save you can post your portrait on your Facebook profile. Accept <laughs> photography. I love using Lara Ultra Macro 2.5 best folder for mine and Keiko. What do you think about that lens? It's a good lens, uh, the, the lower 25mm, it's a good lens. It's on my shelf behind me. I don't like the fact it doesn't have a filter thread on it though. It really puts me off using it. Whereas my uh, my Canon MPE lens has a filter thread on it. Now, depending on how well this jumping spider plays ball, will depend on how long this live goes on for. But let me just show you what I was on about with the bungee cord. So we're still on the EVF, yeah? yeah. If I if I focus in, where is it? It's going to be hard to see it. Okay, where is he? Can you see behind him? If I focus there, can you see that? That's the bungee cord he's leaving around. You get off my camera, you. Did you see him trying to get onto the camera then? <laughs> okay, so let's switch it back to the main camera. So for the interest of saving time, I'm actually going to chop the top of this plant off. There we go. So what I'm going to do is put that into my strongest um, mini tripod, which is this one. Okay, that's going to limit him now as to where we can go. Yeah, I mean, when I first started macro photography, I spent a good few hours cleaning up bungee cords. It is very annoying. So whenever possible, I would recommend that you remove that bungee cord as you go along in the photo shoot. Okay, I'm just going to set the background back up. And we shall continue our shoot. Telling you that's an off shoot in my portrait. I wanted to leave. <laughs> yeah, like I <laughs> Yeah, Bob took a bunk, didn't he? <laughs> told you, I, I told you he was an arsehole. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, you. Okay, so let's set this background up a little bit. Switch the EVF for me. This side on at the moment on this petal. I'm hoping he'll turn around. 
get off. He's trying to get on my lens, you see? He's like, give me that lens, give me that lens. Right, where are you? But I don't really mind the bungee cords because they're part of the major headers at this point. It is. I don't mind one or two bungee cords on the shots. The problem is, is the longer your shoot goes on, um, the more and more bungee cords you get in there. Then we've put one of you are going to waste up with this on your face. <laughs> no. I'll tell the missus that. I mean, the, ki the kids still think I'm joking. May as well still joke totally. Oh, my background's too, too, too much. I need to raise that background up. In fact, switch to the main camera. Save me messing around. What I'm going to do is just lower the tripod down. Laura's got happy saying, get away, too many people mm. watching. <laughs> Putting the tripod down <coughs> is easier than messing around in the background. However, the side effect of that is he's lower to the ground and he's more inclined to jump off. Question. EBF for me. I'll do the question in a minute. He's in a good position at the moment. Okay. Moment. Ooh, have nice. Have you ever tried a computer monitor as a background as I've tried this one? Yes, I have. Um, computer monitors are backgrounds, that, that they are good because you can easily change them. However, they don't produce very much light. So you find yourself having to bump up your ISO. There we go, we're coming back. I just adjusted the, uh, the background. Uh, where is he? How old is Hoppy? I don't know. I don't know how old Hoppy is. I, I got him from Southwest Jumping Spies, but unfortunately they've stopped trading now. That's nice. Don't worry about the edge. We can cut that out in post. Four stars on that one. Now, even though we've got a decent shot of him, switch to the main for me. Even though we have a decent shot, of Hoppy or Jumping Spider. I'm going to continue because uh, the shot I posted on Instagram of him, um, was it last week? That was one of the very final shots of that particular shoot. And I'd just like to monitor him, just see where he's going. Another thing I would advise you to do is try and predict where the Jumping Spider is going to go. And if you can get that camera set up before he gets there, even better. Craig has put now people can see how hard this actually is. When we see your images, we always think you have a special time. Oh, yeah, don't they? Yeah, it, it can get quite hard, it can. And bear in mind, I'm doing this while live streaming as well. Hoppy looks female, doesn't it? Yeah, I, I did think that, but I wasn't 100% sure. Are you sure. focusing the camera lens manually, or are you moving the camera? Both. Set. I am moving... Okay. I'm moving the camera. Well, let, let me just talk you through. Right? What what I usually do is. Do you want this main? No, no. Keep it on the EVF so they can see. Actually, no. Yeah, switch to the main or the alt. Have a look at the alt. The alternative camera. See if that'll pick it up better. Yeah, that'll be better. Okay. So what I do is, I zoom. I keep saying zoom. It's focusing, but to me, the focusing ring on a macro lens is basically the zoom. It's how much magnification you're going to get. So I usually zoom it out a little bit, find where Hoppy or your subject is, and then slowly turn the ring and move in to get it into the magnification that I like. Switch to the um the thing go for me. What thing? EVF for me, please. Yeah. So if you look here now. So I'll go here now. I'm zoomed out a little bit. 
So on that particular shot, we are at uh, just over one to one on the magnification. I will then hold on. I will then zoom or put the magnification up, move it in slowly, and then get the shot. Switch the main camera for me. Now bear in mind, however, that because I'm using this rig and I want to show you the EVF, which is very important for me to teach you this, I lose my focus peaking function. So I'm having to actually guess if it's in focus just by this little screen here. If you're doing it with a mirrorless camera, you're looking for the EVF, you'll have a focus peaking where the spider's eyes will glow red when it's sharp and that's just when you take the shot. Laura, can you show us how you hold the camera with the stability? Stability? Not, I can't show you at the moment because it's, well, I could. Do you want to switch the uh, the alternative? Okay, so can you get that in shot? So literally I'm here like this. I usually have my eye against the EVF, which steadies it. I have my one hand over here for my shutter. I have a finger and thumb, okay, on the front uh, adapter right and then if I can show you this which is the main camera for me so I'm like that then if I need to hit the focusing I can just move it with my thumb like that okay and another thing you can do as well with these lenses because unfortunately with the lower lens it's it's a metal focusing ring you could pop on one of these little wristbands onto your focusing ring and that way it gives you more grip on your thumb so if you are focusing with just a single thumb or finger, it makes it a lot easier. Someone's put what jumping spider breed is it? But um, someone's just answered it. Oh, that's okay. It's been answered. It's okay. Switch to the EVF for me. Okay. Uh, she was in a good position then, but she's turned around, unfortunately. Switch to the alt. Okay, so I can see it. I can see a nice image there. I've been trying to get this type of image for a couple of weeks now where I'm shooting through. Oh, you, she moved. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I've been trying to get the, switch to the main for me. I've been trying to get um, a shot of the jumping spider where I'm shooting through the flowers and getting the jumper, but they go into the position, but every time I get that focusing there, they just move. Right, let's see what we got here. Switch to the EVF. 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 Okay, I'm just gonna I'm gonna pop my TTL up by 0.3. I'm gonna overexpose it slightly. I'm gonna take a test shot just to see what that looks like. That's okay. Yeah, sometimes, uh, it's just the main for me, uh, sometimes, oh, it all depends on the mood. I mean, sometimes I'll underexpose and do a dark and moody edit, or I'll overexpose and then do a bright and cheerful edit. Uh, this one, I'm in the middle, so I'm not too sure. EVF for me. That's a nice side profile image there, look. She's gone the opposite way to what I thought she was going to do, though. Okay. Not quite placed properly. There we go. And basically, this is all it is. Just rinse and repeat. Just keep on going. Again, if you've got a jumper that's jumping all over the place, then just put it back in the enclosure. If it's a wild one, then it's tough. You're not going to get the shot. Stand up for this one. Be away from in the right position for the experience. <laughs> That's not a bad idea, though, is it? You don't hold your breath, just breathe and shot. Breathe out and shot. Just 
switch to the main port with or the alternative. Oh. Whichever. Oh. Yeah. So she's at a high angle at the moment, so I'm having to shoot down. So I'll put the background card be lower and then I'm gonna shoot down. Oh. CVF. Come on little girl, turn around. Stop wrapping your arms around. I'm going to go on for a few more minutes and then we'll call it quits, I think, on the uh, photography side of this particular shoot. Let's put the two cards on. Right. There. Yeah, you can go somewhere you want to. Let's have a look where you're going there. Where are you going? I'm trying to. I'm getting a bit too close to my lens there, thank you. Believe me, if she jumps onto the lens, it's game over. Because I have to strip the camera down to get her off. Oh, no, she's okay. She's on here. I thought she managed to get onto the lens then. Look this way. Go a willer to look. Look this way, look this way. Can look you this way. Focus bracketing sometimes? My camera doesn't support focus bracketing. I wish it did. Because the R5 and R6 have focus bracketing and the RP has focus bracketing, but the R doesn't. Go figure that one out. I've no idea why. We could always just use the excuse it's Canon. Switch to the alternative view for me. Unfortunately, I don't watch Monty Five, and so I don't know what you're referring to. But can we see that? Yeah, we can see her. You can see her just here. Look, she's right on the edge here. So I'm going to turn it upside down. Interested. PVF. Oh man, just missed the shot. Did you see that? Just the old. We just missed that shot then. Too much gear on your camera. Hmm? Craig's put too much gear on your camera. Nah, it's perfectly fine, Craig. If your car hack it, then obviously you have to pick and choose your gear as you want. work just took right underneath go into the main camera for me so let's see if she is oh no she's still okay i thought maybe she was quitting on me then da, 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 da. right we're gonna let her go through just wander around keep an eye on her let's just go through the images to see if we've got one we can edit with oh yeah i like that one Switch to the EVF for me. So we've got one here that we can use. Nice. Focal point, they are in the perfect position to be fine to focus in that moment, I mean. Yeah, <laughs> they always do that. That one's okay as well. So we have images that we can use to um, edit with. So do we continue or shall we move on to the editing phase of this live stream? What do you think? Let me know what you want to do. Shall we continue? DVF. Definitely continuing here. Oh, she's moved again. You're being awkward tonight. Go on, move forward a bit more. See, I should have been ready then for her, and I wasn't, unfortunately. It is very hard to focus like this. Okay, right. So switch to the main view. So. Let's 
like that. Right, so I've just unplugged the EVF because what I'm going to do, I'm just going to. If you bring the room temperature down, are they less active? The they are, but I don't do that because I think it's cruel, in my opinion. Same as I don't put any of these animals in the fridge either. So I've unplugged the EVF, I'm just going to get some shots like I would do out in the wild. So I want to put Ebbies. I don't keep model spiders, just ones I find in my house. So I don't yeah. want to hurt any. How do you know if they are near mice or other pets for the sick day? Uh, okay, a spider that's near malt will stop eating and will stay inside its sling. So you can easily tell if they're near malt. Oh, and also guys, I forgot to mention at the beginning of the stream that all the techniques I'm showing you will work with wild jumping spiders. Jeff has put, get the shots you're happy with. Emma's put Ebbies. Messy Laura's put Ebbies, then we can move on to where Bob... <laughs> where well, Bob Bob's going to turn up. <laughs> Mine. Put it to the alternative camera. I'm only going to get a couple more shots. I just want to get a couple of shots of her. Because I do like photographing this spider. You can see how much faster I can act now. I've got proper focusing here. I've got my focus peaking, everything. Now, because it's not plugged in. Oh, God, look at that. <laughs> I'll have to show you that in the edit in a minute. Wild specialist spiders usually love being close, dog sick. They do. Oh my god, look at that image. Oh, I like that one. Okay, one more. Promise, guys, which one more? It's like civilization. One more, one more turn. Okay, we'll end up there. Main camp. Right then. As you can see, it is quite hard to live stream and photograph a jumping spider at the same time. So I hope you guys are enjoying this. We are going to now get these images into the computer. While it's doing that, we will answer some questions. In the meantime, I've got to get Madam here back into her enclosure because she's not stopping there. More than likely, Bob will find her and eat her. There we go, she's in there. Yep, she's fine. Right. Let me turn all this off so we can continue with the sh uh, the live stream. Let's right, switch to the alternative and then just re-angle it. Uh, so I look good. There we go. Right then. All right. How was that? Did we enjoy that? Something completely new that we haven't tried before. We'll just get that to the it right position. Now, focusing whale, that's something you would use early mornings, late at night, when the subjects are not moving. Believe me, if you use a focusing whale, you will get a better picture, okay? Your, your subject is more in focus. However, you can only use it if your subject does not move. So, um... In case, you hadn't, in case anyone didn't know, last year the, the wife was working, so I wasn't able to go out early in the mornings. I'm probably the only macro photographer on the planet who's never been out in the early mornings, okay? But this year, we're working together on the YouTube channel, so we will be going out early in the mornings, and I will be taking my Nissi um, focusing rail with me. So... There you go. That's, that's, that's fantastic. If you're having a great time, give me a hell yeah in the comments and maybe give me a suggestion on what we should photograph on our next live. We have... Uh, find a scorpion then that. <laughs> Bob is not on the list, okay? So don't even say Bob in the comments. 
but we do have an orchid <laughs> i'm not buying another bob from the boiler show thank you we have an orchid mantis we have a spiny flower mantis i have um quasimodo it's a mantis that fell out fell off when he was molting and he's like deformed we have a Everglades sling, very, very small. That's the same spider that we photographed in the um, the tutorial that I showed you earlier, which is the complete shot. And we have two adult regal jumping spiders as well. <laughs> is he playing me up? Early morning. She don't get up before lunchtime. That's me. <laughs> yeah, that is you. Right, let me get this lot transferred over now because I keep chatting. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah? So you want another live stream then? Fine, Bob. <laughs> Bob is not getting found, I'm afraid. Well, let it come to us. Okay, I'm just transferring the files now, guys. And, you know, I could put you on to, you know, be right back. But it's more fun doing it like this. Okay. Get in there. Keep this on all. Yeah, yeah, I'll be kept on that now. If you put this thing here, you can you can go off and do your thing now if you want. Right then. I am extremely hot. That was quite hard work that was. Bring up uh, photograph of police circus. Yeah, <laughs> that'd be a good idea, won't it? Let me put my broadcasting software onto this screen here so I can see your comments. Okay, so this is the image. Uh, no, that's not him. No, no. <laughs> it's that one there that's the image you create from the tutorial that i released today again it's half price while this stream is on check the link in the description if you want to see how that image was created and you get to follow along because you get the uh, the raw files so you can edit the image yourself right so let's come to my library let's add a folder da -da 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 -da. And let's see what we got. Okay, there's all my shots. We didn't take too many shots, to be honest with you. Normally, I take two or three times more shots than what we did. But again, because I'm trying to live stream, I'm trying to do, show you the EVF, it's a lot harder to get the image that I wanted. Right then. So we have to call these things down now. So I'm going to select them all, just an Alt Shift to click uh, select them all. I'm going to press P to pick them as a uh, flag. I'm going to set my filters to flagged. Okay. Then we're going to come back to the full screen view. And anything I don't want, I simply press the X key to remove it. Let's have a look here. That's a misfocus, that is. Now these are all the shots that we were taking while she was wandering around and getting used to the uh, the environment that I'd put her on. Okay, we have a shot that's in focus there. Not too keen about the background, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to freestyle it as a potential edit that we could do further on down the line. Don't like that one, 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 don't like that one. And this is very familiar when it comes to uh, macro photography because 99% of your shots you're not going to like. 90% of them be out of focus, the other 9% you just don't like the framing. That one's out of focus, that's out of focus, that's a oh actually that was in focus but again, get rid of that thing, again she's not looking in a particularly nice spot. Now, they don't have to be looking at the camera, but as long as it's pleasing, pretty sure I missed that, sh that, that, missed that focus, didn't we? Okay. Right, that is a three star. Got another one here, nice pose. 
focusing is on the eyes, which is good, but the background sucks. So I'll give that a two star. We'll come back to that. Let's take a look here. Yeah, that's okay. A three star. It's not my favorite. I know which one my favorite is and which one I'm most likely going to edit. No, no, don't like it, don't like it, don't like it. Background sucks, background sucks. Ooh, let's have a look at this one. Yep, that's okay. We'll give that a three star. And we've got two the same, so let's just see which one's the sharpest. And what I'm looking at, I'm looking at the hairs right here between the eyes to see which one is the sharpest. I would say it's that one, so therefore we'll be in that one. And we got another one. Let's do the same again. Though I can already see that one slightly missed the focusing there. Look, do you see that? Compared to that one, that one's way sharper than that one. So we will bin that one. We don't want it. You ain't got what's coming for me. What? You ain't got what's coming. Just about. Thank you, Mr. Davis. Okay, tracing now. X doesn't remove it from the drive, it just removes it from my view. I'll show you that in a minute, okay? Uh, we don't want that one. No, no. Mm. Let's take a look here. Yeah, that's okay. That's okay. We'll get a three star. I zoomed in a bit more. Let's uh, take a look. Yep, yeah, we can get away with that one. Restyle that one as well. And bear in mind, guys, I'm going really fast on this, okay? Because normally I spend a lot more time. If you look at that one, is better focusing than that one, okay? So we'll bin that one. We don't want that one. Don't want that one. No, 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 no. Take a look here. No, that's when I have exposed it slightly. Always playing around with my settings all the time. Nope, Mr. Focusing. Nope, nope. Actually, I'll do that one. That one would have been good as a low key image. Yeah, I'm going to mark that up, see what I can do with it. No, 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 no. That's a potential. Uh, Rob, no, I don't. I haven't sold any jumpers by the photo. I'll just do it for the fun of it. Okay. No, no. <laughs> that's, that's the one I complained about. Now, see this leaf here? See this leaf just here, this petal? I could not see that through my viewfinder because the, uh, the aperture was at 2.8. Okay, so as soon as I took the, the, the shot, it closed down to, what was we on? Uh, F11. And we have an ugly petal right in the way. <laughs> okay, so that wasn't very good. Now this one I like. Hopefully it's, yeah, it's in focus. I like that one. And I like one of these ones. Let's take a look. That one, and we've got this one. Let's see which one's sharper. Second one, in my opinion, is sharper. Give that a three star, give that a three star. Okay, so we've got some picks here. We just got to pick one that we want to edit. So I don't want to edit any ones where there's a hole or the background is missing. So we have this one, four star, that one. That one, that one, and that one that we can edit. So I'm going to switch my filter to rated and then go to four. So we're going to have a look at these. Okay, the zoomed in one there I prefer over the first one. So let's five star that one. Let's have a look here. Bob, have you sold any of your jumping phones? I've already, I've already answered, Bob. Okay. So, I don't like that one because you've got this little bit of a pedal in the way. Now, these two, obviously, 
The one I would want to edit for you is that one. I like that one. Okay. And we can edit both, but we want to edit the um, the other one. We've got three that we can edit. And I'm thinking this is the one I want to edit, this one right here. All right, let's go to develop. Make sure it is the correct one, yeah. So first thing I'm going to do is just crop in a little bit. And when it comes to cropping, you can crop in and get away with it, I'd say 30 to 40%, but if you start pushing in too far, then you're going to show up pixels and imperfections in the image. So you want to be careful how much you crop, okay? So I'm going to try a crop of that there. So I'm going to come over to my presets. These presets are available from my website if you do want to get some. So I'm just going to check my presets to see if there's any that work well. When it comes to these presets, they're mostly just um, color variations. You've still got to edit the image afterwards, so don't just slap on a preset and call it done, because it ain't going to work. Okay. So the first thing I like to do here is I like to edit my images in a 2-1 process. I like to put um, color grading or a preset for the background and the flower, and then a separate one for the spider, okay? So I'm looking right now, I'm looking at the, uh, the scene or the flower that the spider is on. Just gonna go through, just have a look, which ones do I like? With that one, I like, I like uh, the editing on the spider on that particular one just there. That one's okay, but the flow is a bit muted for my liking. That one's overboard, too much, too much. Uh, um, hmm, can't make my mind up. What do you think, that one or that one? That black's too much. I really wish there was a, um, a percentage slider in Lightroom where you could say, I only want 50% of this particular look. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna go with that one first. Okay. Let's take a look at that. So look what we got. Yeah, that's going to work. Okay, I'll get to your questions in a minute, guys, okay? Right, so we have, again, I'm processing that for the flower and the background. Okay, so I don't do any spot removal in Lightroom. I prefer to go to Photoshop to do that, and we will be going over there in a minute. But what I've done here is I've just given it a quick process for the flower and the background. I need to emphasize that, okay? So let's right click and we're gonna take that into Photoshop. Let's let Photoshop load up. Okay, now we're gonna minimize that and come back to our shot. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at the processing for the jumping spider itself. So I'm just looking at that one compared to there, because the um, although this looks great on the flow, it's a bit too blue on the actual jumping spider itself. That one could work. Let's have a look here, see what else we got. And if you're starting from scratch, you don't have any actions, then as you create your images, you just create actions, uh, sorry, actions, um, presets that you generally apply to your images every time you use it. So 
So very similar, very similar indeed. So I'm thinking of going with this one here. Okay, let's click on there. Okay, and I'm going to come in, I'm going to take my white balance tool and just white balance the image. Just there, it's very slight edit that is, but it's just to get the colors correct on the spider. Okay, and again, I don't do my uh, retouching in Lightroom. I hate Lightroom for retouching, it just, mm, I just don't like it. <laughs> okay, right, so I'm going to bring this over. I'm just shift clicking and dragging that layer over to my image. So there we have one processing for the flower and a processing for the jumping spider. So I'm going to alt click, put on a layer mask. I'm going to zoom in very quickly. And bear in mind, I'm doing this very quickly, guys, okay? I expect you to take more time doing it than what I am, okay? I'm just going to paint that effect onto the spider now. Just very quickly doing it, okay? Very quickly. I haven't even got my whack on plugged in because I just want to not bore you by spending two hours retouching a jumping spider. I don't think you will find that very fun. Of course, if you want to see more of this, then uh, my tutorials are available from the website. There's a nice and dirty plug for you. All clicking on the mask will reveal the mask and I can just go in here now and fill in the missing bits. Very laggy. You wouldn't think this is a £2,000 machine, would you? Do you know what I mean? Right. <laughs> this is why I want an apple. Right, there we go. That will do. Okay. Right, now let's zoom that out and take a look at the full uh, image. And I'm going to drop the opacity to 75%. This is what I wish we could do in Lightroom. I really wish. I didn't have to come into Photoshop. I wish you could go in Lightroom and go, right, I want a, say an adjustment layer with this effect on it that only affects this area of the image. You know, other software allows you to do it. So I don't understand why Lightroom doesn't allow you to do it. Right, now then, we want to correct the uh, spider because it's a little bit underexposed. So I'm going to grab an elliptical marquee tool Uh, about there will do the job. Okay, I'm going to come up to my adjustment layers. I'm going to put on a brightness and contrast. We're going to rack up that brightness. Okay, now the only reason I've done that is so as I can see the feathering on it. So I'm going to put up the feathering. That's it. Once I've done putting up the feathering, I will then bring down the brightness just a tad, like so. Okay, next, I've done that. This is what I call colorizing. I am, you know, I'm always colorizing my images and pushing the blacks and the whites around. Once I've done that, we then have to go into the retouching and find our dust bunnies. If there's any dust bunnies, if there's anything in the image that's irritating us. Not so much on this spider, but on the uh, the older spiders, you tend to find that they don't clean themselves as often. So they've got bits of uh, dust and dirt and sand all over them. So I'm just going to go in here now, at 100%. Move around, you can see our dust bunny just here. Create a new layer. I'm going to come over to my healing brush tool, making sure I'm on all layers. And alt click to select an area and then just heal those dust bunnies up. And I haven't cleaned my camera in quite a while to be honest with you, so the fact there's only a couple of dust bunnies is quite surprising. Hmm. 
Right, let's uh, let's come out there. There's hardly any dust bunnies at all. It's a very clean image. I was hoping to be able to uh, show you some more. But one thing is bugging me is this little speck here, okay? There is like, I think it's like a grain of sand maybe. So I'm just gonna get rid of that. I don't want that in my image. Let's take a look at our spider and some chappy. And again, I'm not doing my full edit because honestly, I'd be at errors trying to do the full edit. I'm just gonna take you through the essentials of what I do. So you, you, you hit on or create the color looks or presets, hit them on there, get the look you want, merge them together, create masks, mask it all out, clean up your dust spots, clean up any bungee cords or anything like that that are in the way, say if there's one going across the spider's eye, you'd clean that up. We're lucky on this one that we haven't got much on the spider's eye to clean up, which is fantastic, okay? So another thing I do like to do sometimes, it all depends if, uh, if I can be bothered, I'll be honest with you, is sometimes I like to brighten the eyes up so I'm going to give it a quick go here, but I don't want to be all night doing it, okay? So again, brightness and contrast. Whack that brightness up. Click on the mask. Bring the feather up. Yes, I'm finding it very hard to do because the computer is quite laggy. Okay. Come back and we shall drop that very slightly. And it's only a touch, can you see there? Very slight touch. I'm gonna just duplicate that. Bring one over to there. Again, it's very, very slight. It's just something I do like to do sometimes. And of course, we can always come in here and give it alien eyes if you want to. Okay. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend it though, to be honest with you. But let's face it, we see it all the time in portraiture where someone's got alien eyes. Okay, right then. So I'm done with that now, with the edits. We're done correcting it. And uh, what we wanna do now, don't worry guys, I'll get to the chat in a minute. I'm gonna create a copy of all everything here. So I've created a new layer, control alt shift E to merge it all into a new layer. And now I'm gonna come into Topaz Labs. And we're going to remove the noise from this. So I need to move my spider image up to where I can see the face of the spider and the background. So you can see there, I'm hoping you can see it on the, on the stream. But you can see how it's cleaning up the background. So it's nice. It um, hasn't got so much noise in the background. I'm gonna Bump it up a little bit because there's a little bit of noise in his hairs. There we go, let's clean that up nicely. Click apply. Now obviously when you clean up noise, you kind of soften the image slightly. Now Topaz Denoise is very good at cleaning up noise. It's not so good at creating the sharpness. So what we're going to do on this image now is we're going to sharpen it. Now I have an action for this, okay. Um, what I want to do is, I'm just going to go full screen. I'm going to show you this now. Hopefully I can remember how to do this because I use an action all the time. So we're going to create a new layer. Control Alt Delete. Okay. And we're going to call this one normal. And we're going to do vivid light. In the vivid light, I'm going to switch that to a vivid light and then invert the image. And hope to God I can remember how to do this because usually I use an action. I'm going to right click, create a smart object. We're then going to come to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, two pixels from my camera. Very important to play around with these settings because you don't know what settings are best for your camera because your megapixels are different to mine. But uh, two works great for mine. We are now going to select both of those layers, bring them into a new group. I'm gonna call this sharpening. And then we're gonna select the blend mode of that to overlay. 
okay now let me just come in here to show you the before and after so there's the before the sharpening and after and what's brilliant about that technique and i do teach this in my latest tutorial is that you don't get the haloing effect around uh, contrasty areas which is a, a great way of sharpening your images and i believe that technique will work with most images okay then so we are uh, we are basically done with this edit here i might just brighten it up very slightly no raw brightness i've clicked on light, uh, levels i want brightness thank you there we go i'm just going to brighten it up very slightly there we go as far as i'm concerned that is done okay now if i had more time and i wasn't streaming i would come in there and i would color grade this leaf down here to match the background um i don't know if i want to do that right now it might take too long so we're just going to leave it like it is so next i'm going to come save this image i'm going to put this into my portfolio we're going to come to portfolio portfolio psd just call it jumping spider live now ordinarily i would be done at this point but someone has asked me to show them how i post on instagram so i'm going to go through now and show you how i format my images for instagram okay so let's come back here and the very first thing i do if i'm going to edit for instagram is to flatten the image because i don't want all the layers okay i'm just waiting for the save to complete i'm saving to a spinner so it's a lot slower the um sincere promotions you can always buy one of my tutorials it's in there okay <laughs> shameless plug but i do have to eat <laughs> okay all right layer we're going to flatten the image now we've saved our psd out at this point you can also save out a social media one or a an image for your website if you want to i'm going to skip that i'm going to go straight into the instagram for you okay all right so instagram instagram is a fan of four by five ratio image okay so we go four by five this is our zoomed out because what i do is i do i have a zoomed out version and i have a zoomed in version where you scroll left and you get to see the whole um, spider this one is the zoomed out version so we are going to crop that to a five by four okay we will then export this or save a copy i should say and i'm going to put this into social media i'm going to call it jumping spider live okay i'm going to save it as a jpeg and click save and there we go so that's our first image for instagram now if anyone has seen my instagram if not go to instagram stuart wood art follow me on there okay um what you see is you usually see a big image like you've just said and then a zoomed in image where you're scrolling left and right to get a, like an interactive type of view of it so what we want to do there is we want to undo what we've just done which is the uh the crop and we're back to our crop tool let me get this in the middle there thank you and that is our um crop for instagram which is a four by five crop now if you want to do two images then what you got to do is multiply that on the horizontal so if you want to do two you multiply the four by two if you're doing three images you multiply it by three okay so in this case we're only going to do the two so we want to go eight by five and we'll then crop it down again don't crop it do too much because you will see the imperfections of your image sensor okay i'm going to go about there for this particular image we'll click uh, OK for that and what you want to do is you want to click and hold the crop tool that will open up a sub menu and you want to click on the slice tool you get the slice tool click and hold drag it out and it will snap 
to the 50% mark of your image. Can you see there? So now we have two slices, okay? The next part is very easy. You come to File, Export. We're gonna save for the rev, okay? Now I'm saving as a JPEG at 80% quality. The maximum width I want is five, 1,500, okay? We click Save. And I'm going to go and navigate to the folder where I have my uh, work. So that's portfolio, social media, and we find the jump is by the live. We're going to click save. And that is going to automatically chop that image up and save it out for you. Okay, so if we come to my folder now, I will show you those images. Portfolio, social media, okay. I can switch back to now, jump by the live. So in here we have our main image, which is the image I just produced. Now bear in mind, um, these images are gonna be over saturated because Windows is, um, how can I say it, shit. <laughs> okay, and it, it doesn't see color calibration. It, I don't know why, I don't know why. It's Windows 11, I mean, we're on our 11th version of Windows yet, you can't seem to have an integrated color calibration so that the whole thing is uniformed. Anything that it previews like this here is always oversaturated. Same as if I was to put this image onto my desktop as a desktop theme, it'll be oversaturated. So it's not oversaturated, it's just the way Windows is showing it, okay? God, Windows is nine, I want a Mac. <laughs> I want a Mac and I want to find Bob. That's the two things in life I want to do this year. <laughs> right, so that's our main image. And now if we come into this folder here that Photoshop has created, we will find two other images. We have this image here, okay, and that image, okay. Now unfortunately I can't show you the next stage because it's on the phone, but you go into Instagram, you click on a new upload, you select the main image, which is this image here, and in fact, I might do a video tutorial for this on the YouTube, but you select that image. You then click on the little icon for multiple images, select the next two images, go onto the description, add your hashtags, post, and you will get that nice sliding effect that you get on my Instagram, Stuart Wood Art. Go and follow me there. So that is it. We are finished editing our jumping spider image. So I hope you enjoyed that. We've been going an hour and a half. That's a way quicker than I thought it was going to take, I'll be honest with you. Let me bring this over here so we can have a look. I'm just going to check the comments now, guys. So, did we enjoy that? I'll sort of stick around for another 10 minutes or so. I'll answer some questions now. Uh, do we have any serious questions in here? Da, 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 da. It's time for vodka. Oh, the shop's closed, ain't it? We've got vodka. Hey? We've got vodka. Yeah, but we ain't got Red Bull. Oh. <laughs> oh, God. So, yeah. So that is it. That is my process for photographing jump spiders. Now, if you want to see this in more detail, then please do check out my website. I have links to tutorials there. I'm going to be posting a lot more of the complete shot tutorials where I have an image that I've created and I'll take you through from start to finish. Um, there's going to be a lot more of those tutorials. And again, it's 50% uh, off at the moment during this live stream. So if you want to see that um, those tutorials, then check that out in the link in the description. I also have Rose, how to photograph your pet jumping spider. That is, I believe, a two hour uh, course on how to do this type of work. So let's have a look, have we got any questions? Let's have a look. Do you print your own images? No, I don't print my own images. My, my printer's crap, I'll be honest with you. It's good for backgrounds, but that's about it. Uh, now I use Photo Labs um, for doing my print work and I mostly have it printed out onto metal. I do really like the metal prints at the moment. And um, the lab I use is up in Scotland somewhere. I forget their name, unfortunately. But yeah, I have it. I, I'll print it out onto onto um, metal. Looks fabulous. It really does. So, lower eighty five millimeter versus one hundred millimeter worth the change. Uh, Roman, are you struggling with the weight from the one hundred millimeter? 
that's my only question. If you're struggling with the weight and size of the 100 millimeter, then the 85 millimeter would be a good choice. If not, I'd stick with the 100 millimeter. I'll be honest with you. The 100 mil is sharper than the 85 mil. Uh, sincere promotions. I stopped using Adobe products since they switched to the cloud. What apps can you recommend for processing macro time lapse sequences? Uh, I wouldn't know. I don't use anything else but Adobe at the moment. I am tending to move away from Adobe at the moment because let me just get rid of that. <laughs> That's bugging me, that is. Because um, Premiere keeps crashing out. It's one of the reasons I'm, I'm still doing one video a week because it keeps crashing on me. And I'm pretty sure it's not the computer okay um so <laughs> we'll see i might move me over to the da vinci but i will be sticking with photoshop because photoshop runs solid uh right uh, i've answered that one looking forward to the various mantises. is yeah i think what i'm going to do is for the next live i'm going to put on a poll on uh, my youtube and i will ask you what do you want me to photograph next on our YouTube live? Okay, it's gone pretty well. We've had no uh, mess ups or snags or anything, so that's pretty good. Uh, okay, yeah, thank you. People are asking about Discord. Okay, the Discord link, my Discord now is behind a paywall. And the reason I've done that is I had a lot of, uh, very, lack of a better word, idiots come into the Discord. They'd come in, uh, they'd bug the members, keep asking stupid questions and stuff like that and then just mess off so if you want access to my discord and in there uh, what i haven't advertised this actually is i do live broadcasts in discord i mean the um, the voice chat all the time so if you want to come and chat to me personally you can do that if you look down in the description there's a patreon link and access to the discord channel as well as behind the scenes stuff like how i made my macro flash diffuser that is all on my patreon account I've literally only just started the uh, the Patreon account, so there's only like one or two posts on there, but you will get access to the Discord server where you can talk to me on a daily basis, basically. Okay. Uh, let's have a look. Any more questions, guys? Canon 200 Pro printer. Yeah, they're nice, they are. I haven't got the room for them at the moment, though, unfortunately. Okay. Okay. So you just ordered. You just ordered a Kim Kimco. Is it seventy to two ten? I've never heard of them, so I don't know if it's any good. So unfortunately, I haven't heard of that. Okay. So yeah, if you did like the live stream, give it a thumbs up. Give it a share because you know the more people we get on these live streams, the more often I can do it um cc is going on about apple sheep i don't care if it's apple sheep if it bloody works then i'm having it <laughs> okay how how could you manage to oh this is lawrence uh, how could you manage to lighten the subject before taking the picture with two to one man vacation the light is very low are you on about the exposure or are you on about lighting it for focusing it's two different things just let me know if it's um, the exposure, like when you take the shot or if it's when you're trying to take the shot, okay? Laura, have I ever tried continuous light? Yes, I have. Don't like it. Uh, I like flash because it freezes the action. The um, Our jumping spider is well behaved, okay? It's a lot easier to do it with the pet jumping spider. With a wild jumping spider, that thing is running around all over the place and you've got to freeze the action. You've got to just get the shot. So with flash, it just freezes the action <coughs> uh, only with flashlight i'm not lawrence i'm not too sure what you're asking to be honest with you if you're on about light as in for exposure um I, I use flash all the time for my photography even in bright sunlight I'm, I'm still using flash okay because as you get into the magnifications higher magnification rays you lose light and the sun is too harsh anyway, so I do like to use flash. If you're talking about lighting your subjects for focusing, then you can use an LED torch through your diffuser to light up your subject to help you focus. Lou Dan, no, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. 
Yeah, for focusing, yeah, you can strap uh, a torch. I haven't got one with me at the moment. I've got this one, but the battery's in the UV torch to try and find Bob. But literally, you can strap that to your camera. So if you, if you didn't have the twin macro, let's just pretend you don't have the twin macro with there, yeah. You just basically pop that inside your diffuser, strap it on with some uh, elastic bands or something, turn it on, and that will light up your subject enough for you to focus okay so if you haven't got focus in leds just use a torch that will get you through that problem rob davison i haven't sold any prints so i wouldn't be able to tell you if water drop photography sells or not i'll be honest with you i don't know alternatively we could do a water drop photo session next as well if you're interested in that <laughs> sincere promotions thank you for the uh, the purchase man it really does help. I've got to save up my money and get me a Mac. I really have. Yeah, try 17 times macro. But that's interesting. I mean, that's a, an absolute nightmare. I do want to... Um, listen, I'm working to a budget at the moment, okay? Ideally, I want to do this type of thing out in the field. So for that, I've got to get me a MacBook. We've got to get, um, you know, the setup to be able to stream from, uh, you know, a lot by a lake or something. But let me know in the comments, right, would that be something of interest to you for to do a live stream like this, but out in the nature? Because that will be on another level, you know. Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah, thanks for the support, Rob. No worries. I'll, I'll check my phone because it's, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm using it to do the live stream at the moment, so I can't physically check it. Okay, so I'm going to leave it there then, guys. If there's no more questions, I'm going to sign off. I'm going to go have me a vodka and Red Bull. I'm going to send the missus down the shop to get the Red Bull because we ain't got none. And, uh, yeah, I am going to look forward to our next live stream because I think this has been quite successful. I like live streaming because... I haven't got to edit the videos. Yeah, it makes it so much easier. Presley with Premiere, it's it's an absolute bag of balls at the moment. It keeps crashing out. I'm pretty sure it's not my computer. So I'm pretty sure it's the Adobe software. But yeah, we are going to do another one. I'm not going to schedule it yet because I'm eight videos behind on my channel. <laughs> okay, I've got eight videos to come out. Um, so I'm thinking um, not April but maybe May we might do another live stream. Let me know if that's something you want, either in the comments here or message me on Instagram or any social media. Just let me know how you liked it, did you like it, do you want another live stream, and what do you want me to photograph next? It's not going to be Bob, because we're not going to find him, I don't think, okay? But that's where I'm going to leave this video. Again, thank you for the support. Links in the description if you want to check out some of my products. You don't have to buy them. It just helps to support the channel. helps me to create this type of content for you. And uh, that's where I'm going to leave it. So thank you for watching. Look out for the next live stream. Like and subscribe so you don't miss a thing. And I'll 